and the exhortations, the commands which are given to you as a believer in the new realm with all these tools, that's why they're there. So you do the work, so you live holy. No, you want to be holding back all the time, thinking, you know, I can't do a holy life, but perhaps I'm going to be working for my salvation. That's foolishness. That's the devil's lie. That's what the church of this time is confused about. Satan's only cut the ground for us. We see all of these principles laid down for us. Notice most of them have simply just been teachings about what God, all of them are teachings about what God has done for us up to verse 11, we've done up to verse 10 so far, we have seen that there's been no practical instruction. All the way through, there's just this theological explanation that's coming through. But even when we get to verse 11, we're not actually told to do anything. It simply says, let's read it aloud together with me. We'll preempt just the beginning of the next message here, to so doing. Ready? Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Do you see the word reckon there? The Greek word is against life. And this is the word from which we get our English mathematical term logarithm. The word logizomai means to count. It means to compute, or as Mr. Strong says, it means to take inventory. So the very first practical instruction that God gives us after he gives us all these things, telling us about the glorious things that he's provided for us to stand on by faith, the first thing he tells us to do is take inventory of these principles of our union with Christ. Consider them well. Consider exactly where the spiritual realities are to build upon. And I get the distinct impression that God tells us to reckon on these things because He does not want us to gloss over them. Why would he go to all of the trouble to give us all this detailed information? I believe that part of the reason why Romans 6 is so difficult to understand is because he wants us to work in the process of digging and exploring and trying to find these things out. We are actually meditating on these things. And I'm sure God never intended for our thinking about Romans 6 to be befogged so many fuzzy edges as it has been. You see, our spiritual growth is more important to God than it is to us. But are we willing to put the work in? That's why he says, reckon on these things. Think deeply on these things. Meditate on these sure footings on which you will locations of those footings we are like builders trying to erect the walls of sanctification on mud or sand those walls simply will not stand because they are built on the realities the spiritual realities of what God's done let me suggest to you that there are all kinds of pseudo-religious philosophical tricks that Christians are resorting to in their search for instant sanctification. They are trying to build holy lives without fully understanding where God has laid the footings for them to build upon. In the messages that follow, we're going to be looking at the practical nuts and bolts of exactly how we are to build on these very carefully laid footings.